Hi, I'm Greg Smith, and this is going to be a quick playthrough video for Western Front Ace. Um, as you can see, uh, there's a huge amount of materials that come in this game, and the first thing I want to tell you is don't panic, because you really only use about 10% of them at any given time. For example, this huge stack of charts, we don't use them because they're with uh, for countries that don't apply in the game. Uh, same thing over here. We see our, our we're going to play the British. Uh, we're not going to use uh, ace cards are optional. They're pretty, but we're not going to use the ace cards. So those just go to the side. Uh, we are going to put our rank or second lieutenant. We're going to play in the RFC for the British and we'll be fighting against the Germans. So to start the game, we prepare our base and aircraft, um, prepare a log sheet. Prepare aircraft, which I've done here. Here's my log sheet. Uh, aircraft display. Uh, now I'm going to actually play with the Sopwith Pup. Normally you can't play this at the start because it requires a prestige point, but we'll see that in a second. So we're going to go to flight school and expend our point if desired, which we won't be doing. So at flight school, basically the first part of flight school, you're rolling dice or flipping cards to see if you get discounts to buy skills later in the game. Uh, we'll just say that, yes, I uh, succeeded and uh, earned a uh, gunnery discount. So when I buy gunnery, it'll cost me one less skill uh, experience point to buy. So it's just sort of like a coupon, if you will. Uh, so that's the first half. The second half of flight school is where you choose how to do your spare time. Uh, so you make the choice. If I choose extra carousing, I'll start the game with a prestige point and a prestige level of one. So prestige level one, one prestige point. And the prestige level of one allows me to fly, start the game with this up with pup. So I'm going to do that. There's, I have several choices for the British. I could fly BE-12 or a strutter uh, or a uh, DH-5, but I've decided to go with a, uh, excuse me, DH-2, but I've decided to go with the SOP with PUP. All right, so first things we do, since I decided to do that, we've done that. I'm now graduated from flight school. Yay, I get my point, experience point. Now, uh, we're going to set up the mission. At the start of each month, you place or remove MGO markers. Stands for Major Ground Offensive. At the start of the game, that would be Verdun is going on and the Somme. Now I'm going to just say that I've, I'm going to choose Bertangles as my starting base. So I might participate in the Somme, possibly. Uh, another thing that you should, uh, these... Uh, Sequence of play cards are optional, but they're actually pretty useful. So you, until you get used to the game sequence, you might want to use them. Uh, card zero is prep to play. Card one, mission start. Now we roll for the number of contact patrols. So six, there'll be six contact patrols in September of 1916. So that's actually quite a bit. And Max, I could have gotten. Uh, you obviously you fly every day in reality. But the contact patrols are just represents those patrols where you actually ran into things, something or had a good chance to run into something. All right, roll on chart A1 for mission is our next uh, operation. So here's A1. This is uh, probably one of your key charts. It's 1916. Uh, we're not central powers, we're allied. So we come down to this chart or this box. 12. Great. Balloon busting. Okay. So our first mission is balloon busting. Um, so that will be the current mission. And uh, yeah, apologies, I need to set up my airplane. I've got uh, six ammo points. So two, four, six. Um, the current endurance is at max. Current location, well, right now we're in the hangar. And uh, so now that I balloon busting is our mission. Uh, so now I'm going to 
roll for encounters. So what we do is we take off and you can actually run into somebody right after takeoff. So that's the first, so first thing we do is we move endurance box to take off. Move up here, roll two dice, five. Five says fighter, except for it's got double asterisks, which means it um, in, in Italy, it's not a fighter, it's nothing. But we've actually run into an enemy right now. Um, so, all right, let's see who that is. Here's the German encounter charts. Now, there's 60 aircraft, 30 different double-sided mats, but as you can see, there's only a limited amount of Germans you can run into. So the way to, quick, easy way to play the game is just pre-select those charts. For us, there's just four different airplanes we might run into, an Albatross 1, a 2, a Halberstadt, or a Fokker D3. These are the only guys that we have a chance to run into. So let's see who we do run into. And that's a three, that would be a Fokker D3. All right, so fair enough. Here's the guy we're fighting. And we're in the sop with Pup. This chart here, B10, by the way, is only as if you run into a two-seater. So we put the enemy there. There's their ammo. We are here, and this actually happens right after takeoff. So now we roll a starting orientation. So this figures out basically who saw who first. I roll a four, so the player starts advantaged. All right, so that's a good thing. Uh, so the way we do that is we'll take our airplane and the Fokker D3. We're here. The, this would be facing each other, but we're advantaged, so the Fokker is sideways. All right, so this is how it how it goes. By the way, you can play this game with uh, Wings of Glory miniatures, and it's awesome. It works great, but that's besides the point. All right, moving along. Uh, so we're going to shoot. Why not? Here's a deck of cards, the combat cards. Uh, we're just going to burn one ammo point and shoot. Now, by, per rule, the enemy automatically goes defensive. So, But we're shooting. We have... Uh, three firepower. Our forward weapons is three. So we, we go not two, three, four, five. We go to the three column and we see that we do four hits, four damage points. All right, so the enemy is going to defend himself because he can't shoot. He's not facing me. Uh, key in this game is these cards are actually triple usage. If you're attacking, you use the top part. If you're defending, you use the middle. And uh, your rear gunner uses the bottom. So he flips a card and he says, we ignore the top. He said, which was a pretty good card. Embleman, avoid all damage and improve by two. Uh, so that sucks for us. So <laughs> improving by two is he goes to neutral. And the second improvement is now I go disadvantaged. Okay, that was bad. Now we go to the end of the round. At the end of every round of combat, you go to B12 initiative chart. I'll be red, he's white. We roll dice and compare. Okay, I rolled a two, he rolled a one, but I'm 13 speed and agility combined. He's only a 12 speed plus agility. So I get a, a point for that difference. A point here is I'm Two points better than him. Unfortunately, net differential, zero to two, no change. So this is how it st stays. Second round of combat. Next round. All right, now he is facing me by roll heel shoot. Now I have several options at this point. Forgot to do. Uh, you start the game with the reflexes skill. You can use this once per mission, and that's to shoot first or to improve your position at the end of a round. Advanced Maneuver uh, avoids one random hit and improves by one. So instead of drawing a card to defend myself, I can use a chip. Uh, yee, what do I do here? Well, he's going to shoot at me. I know that for sure. So I'm going to do an Advanced Maneuver 1. So I'm going to flip that to the use side, and that stops one bullet, and 
improves me by one, so we'll be facing. So he fires. And uh, he's on the four, uh, five chart because <laughs> he has twin guns. So uh, he just destroys me. I, okay, so he shoots me down. Uh, nothing. I, uh, well, yeah, there is something I can do about it. All right, so I'm going to expend my uh, good luck charm, my touch wood. I'll expend that and make him redraw because uh, otherwise I'm dead. So good, good choice. So he attacks with this instead. He does four hits. However, this is a gun jam card. So actually he does no jam. He does no hits. His guns are jammed, which is awesome. So I come up over here and I put a jam on his guns. All right, so he does nothing. For him to unjam his guns, he has to basically fly straight and level and screw with, the, screw with his guns. So, uh, that was a really good use of the good luck charm. Save, save me from dying. All right, so I did that. Uh, that was his attack. He jammed himself. And I improved by one as part of this uh, advanced maneuver one. Avoid one hit, improve by one. So now we're neutral. Now it's end of the round. We roll dice again. I'm going to use my other chip reflexes and improve myself by one automatically right now. Actually, that happens after we roll dice. Hang on. First, we'll do this. Five to two. So uh, five to three because I'm one faster than him. So bottom line is that's no change. However, I will use my chit, my reflexes chit, and now I have improved by one. So now I'm sideways on him again. Next round of combat. Uh, I'm shooting. And he's going to go defensive per rule. So I shoot. I am on the three chart. So I do four hits. And he says, he does a bad move. I'm now tailing him at the end. So that was uh, not the best card for him to uh, to pull. So I'm doing four hits. So what what? how do we do damage? Well, we come to chart B6. And we roll for damage. There's a whole bunch of damage counters here. So let's just get four of them out because that's how much damage I did. So this is how I do it. Easy way. One, four. So the red die is a one plus one. So it's one, four. Canvas it means the bullet just passed through, did no harm. All right, whatever. Three more. One, three. Starboard strut. So he just took a hit to his starboard strut. Basically, when he takes... Uh, Four hits on the starboard side, his starboard wing falls off. So, uh, yeah, we hit, we did some damage to his structure. 54, landing gear. He doesn't care. He has bigger issues. 64, forward weapons. Well, he doesn't have to worry about the gun jam because I've, I've knocked out his forward guns. All right, so he's now going to try to go away. Um and so this continues on until uh, he assess, success, successfully escapes or until I shoot him down. Uh, then since I've used up uh, two ammo, I'm probably at this point going to abandon my mission, just go home and land. Uh, plenty of fuel left, but uh, that's what I'll probably do at this point. Uh, and then you roll on the B7 chart for landing, uh, I you can't screw this up unless you have combat damage for the most part. So we're fine. Uh, and uh, that's basically how the, how the game goes. Rinse and repeat, but you do get a chance to earn medals. You get a chance to earn skills, which is the heart of the game is buying more skills that will improve your combat capabilities and give you more decisions uh, during during combat. Um, and there's uh, a lot of different nationalities play. But that's just kind of a rough playthrough. I just wanted to get you get you going and see how it works with the uh, orientations and, and pulling the cards. All right. Thanks for watching.